Hello class, in today's lesson we are going to talk about polymorphism and the benefits that it has for us in programming in Java. Let's take a look at polymorphism. It's kind of a complicated word, polymorphism, but it's actually a pretty awesome and not too complicated topic when we think about it. Poly means many and morphism of course means changeable, so it means that something can be changeable a lot. Let's think about our friend, the vehicle and car relationship. And we had cars inheriting some simple methods and fields from the vehicle. So car has everything that vehicle has. Now this is really cool because Java also knows that car has everything that vehicle has. Which means that when it creates the memory space for a vehicle, we can actually put anything inside of this memory space, this is memory, we can put anything in here that inherits from vehicle. Because we know for a fact that the car will be able to do anything that the vehicle can do, plus maybe some other things. But we really care about what vehicle can do. So let's take a look at how this, this works in code. So we could say vehicle, vehicle V gets the value of a new car. Every time I say that I feel like I want to be on uh, The Price is Right. A new car. Right? So our vehicle gets a new car. This car has everything that the vehicle would use. However, in this case, whenever I use our V, I can only use vehicle methods. So even though it holds a car object, I can only use vehicle methods on the car. However, it will call the methods of the class being held. What do I mean by that? So, in this case, we're holding a car object in our vehicle, V. So when Java calls that vehicle method, it's going to look in that memory location. And what does it see in that memory location? It sees a car object. So it will call on the car. So if I've overridden my uh, different methods, if I've overridden them with the car object, or the car class I should say, the car object will be called and those methods will be called. And if the car didn't override them, then the vehicle method will be called. So I can only use the vehicle methods that have been declared but when I call them, it will implement, implement the methods of the class being called. So this is really cool because it allows us to create broad objects, broad object definitions and class definitions, and then use more specific classes like the car that have more specific behaviors, even using those broad definitions that we created for our general class. And this is the basis of polymorphism. We have one class that can do many different things because we have these child children, these child classes, that have lots of different behaviors. So I could hold 
uh, vehicles, I can hold cars, I can hold sports cars and trucks and all kinds of different things. This becomes really powerful when we look at collections of classes. So let's look at our friend the array list. So we all know array lists can hold just the one data type at a time. So uh, we'll call this V list. So we're going to create a, an array list that holds the vehicle type. Oops, not V list, new array list. Okay, so we're going to hold the type vehicle. And in, in general, we know that we would then fill this, whoops, we would then fill this with our, let's say, vlist.add, and we would say, let's add a new vehicle in here. And a default constructor, and there we go. So we've just added a vehicle to our array list. Now, because of polymorphism, because I know that anywhere I see a vehicle, I can also place anything that inherits from vehicle, I can now add a car to my V list. So I can now say V list.add new car. This is perfectly legal, even though it's a completely different class name. Because car inherits from vehicle, I can absolutely call this. But still, whenever I access those objects, I can still only call methods defined by vehicle. Right? So even though I put a car in this list, I can still only call the methods defined by vehicle. Still gives me, it gives me lots of flexibility, but there are some limitations there. Okay, let's talk about one other thing that may come up in the AP exam, and it's an important thing to think about with polymorphism. You may be tempted, because of this ability to use one object as a parent to store and house lots of other objects, you may be tempted to just inherit from everything. But this doesn't always make sense and it can lead to really messy programs. So we want to have a quick test. We want to make sure that our tree of inheritance really makes sense. And this is the is a versus has a relationship. So the is a and has a, in an is a relationship, your new object, your new class definition is a version of the parent class you're inheriting from. It's is a, right? A car is a vehicle. This is our is a, a car is a vehicle, so it makes sense that the car inherits from the vehicle. However, when we think about like a car's color, the car has a color. This should not be inheritance. The color should not inherit from the car. It's related to the car in that the car contains a color, but it's not related in the sense that the color depends on things that the car has, or that a vehicle has. We wouldn't say that a color has wheels, or that a color has a speed, or a number of passengers that it can hold. So it doesn't make sense that the color would inherit from the car. It makes sense that a car would use a color, but it doesn't make sense the other way around. We can think of this kind of like our uh, little tree here. So let's draw that relationship again. 
here's our vehicle, and here's our car. So it made sense when we had car that we were extending that further to be a sports car. Because a sports car is a car, right? It is a car. So these are green relationships. These are is a relationships. Is a. Is a. However, the color really sits over here on its own tree. And perhaps it inherits from another class, uh, or other classes might inherit from it, but really, the car has a color in this relationship. It has a, and the sports car has a color. And a vehicle might have a color, but the color does not extend. It doesn't add to car, it's part of car. You may see a question like this on the AP exam that asks what the real world relationship would bring to the extension of a current class. And we want to think about this has a versus is a relationship between our objects to keep things neat and tidy so we don't get too out of control. All right, that's everything for this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.